Hi, welcome. Uh, we're going to look at a, a cathedral today, a cathedral shot inside. Um, lighting conditions were awkward. Um, as you can see, um, I ended up taking a, a bracketed shot, five shots, and um, the biggest problem was the light shining through from the top windows here. It was mid-afternoon. Um, the sun was quite low in the sky, so it's, the sun is streaming through the top here, whereas at the bottom um, it's fairly subdued, so quite a large dynamic range. If uh, I look at the lowest exposure, even in this one there are hot spots on the ceiling with basically no information. It's so white. Um, so, and as we go through and open up, uh, you can see generally it's a nice picture but the the range of um, brightness is, is is extreme so what we're going to do is uh, take this into affinity um, and we'll just open up affinity and we'll do a HDR merge and we'll add the photos so these are these are the five taken. We'll open that up. Now uh, we've got automatically aligned images. I don't really need that on, but I'll leave it on. It was, was shot on a tripod, and we'll. Uh, there's no ghosting. There's nobody moving in the scene, so that's not a problem. And we'll leave the normal noise reduction and tone, uh, toning the images uh, as default. Okay. So it's gone through that process, it's just finishing up with the uh, tone map. And it's basically merged those five exposures together to give us a, a better range. And uh, the default is a natural look, uh, which does have tone compression turned on, but local contrast turned off. Now if I slide that down, this is pretty much what, what the image is without any uh, real changes um, except bringing bringing as much of the photo into the dime into the range that uh, means that reducing the blowouts reducing the dark areas and bringing it in okay so what we're going to do um, the actual HDR software gives you a number of defaults you can obviously play around with it yourself now we'll just click on uh, detailed and if we look in the um, uh, roof area here, if I go back to natural, detailed, you can see it bringing out the brickwork, giving it greater contrast there. If I go down, uh, there's a cool version, giving it more of a blue tint. Um, there's a black and white. Again, local contrast is, is being pushed up. And there's a uh, dramatic which to me is a little bit too colourful. Uh, saturation's uh, pulled up a little bit too much there. Uh, there are other options, um, but I think what we'll do is we'll just go for detail to start with. Now, it doesn't fix the blowing out. Um, if the information isn't there, it isn't there. So we still got to repair those areas, but generally the, the image uh, has a little bit more uh, bounce to it. Um, you can play around with the settings yourself so you can pull up the, the local contrast if you want, improve the saturation and the vibrance, contrast etc. Normal, normal sort of controls. But uh, I'm fairly happy with just the, the, the detailed view. Right we'll hit apply and go back to the uh, photo persona. Okay now Generally this is quite nice, but I, I don't like these blown out areas, so we want to repair those. And over on this side, you can see localised hotspots where the sun's coming in from this side and just hitting various parts. They're not blown out completely, but they are a distraction. Um, so I want to balance that out, basically, and at the back here, Again, 
we've got some detail on this side but you can see this side being blown out as well so I'm going to show you two, two ways of uh, repairing this uh, photograph um, so I'm not going to fix everything uh, in this session because uh, it would just be repeating myself uh, but what we'll do is we'll fix this area up here by taking part of the image from the other side and mirroring it over and we'll fix some of these hot spots here just purely by using uh, dodge and burn in this case burn so what we'll do is um, we'll take a selection marquee I just need a rectangular tool for this one and we got basically a hot spot in this area here midway down and at the bottom here so we want to make that better so if I look at this height I'm going to take it from about that edge there to about the middle and I need to go down to this area here down here now I'm going to have a mix here because this side uh, the right hand side is actually better at the bottom on, uh, on, on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side but anyway what we'll do is we'll go edit copy and edit paste so we've pasted in this this area I'll just deselect it pick my selection tool and what I'll do is arrange and flip horizontally so we've moved it we can do now is just move this over and you can see it's a bit too light down the bottom here I've just got to marry this up a little bit now the problem will be is that to all my best uh, intentions the, the camera probably wasn't set up exactly uh, in the centre and symmetrical and more than likely the building itself being hundreds of years old isn't symmetrical itself either so either in the original construction or over the years with um, uh, the settling of the building so there will be differences it won't quite marry up and let's see what we can do to to mitigate that so if we come in here first um, we've got the obvious V where these two meet so let's try and put that over the top there and that's not too bad I can zoom up and just position it that looks quite good so if we look at the top here you can see it going out already that at that point there and at the bottom not too bad actually it's it's uh, reasonably well um, matched in yeah not too bad not perfect but not too bad and what we can do is a uh, mesh wrap tool to just reposition some of the areas here um, so let's zoom up uh, that's not too bad I'm going to be rubbing out most of this area here anyway um, certainly this area you can see the, the difference um, it's actually quite a bit out here but okay here so you can see that there's quite a difference there um, if we look down here um, that's not too bad if we want to look underneath we can just take the opacity of the top one and just reduce that just to see where where it's positioned so what I can do is just grab this corner and just move that just up a little bit just to match that there we go um, that's pulled this in a little bit so I can grab this little handle here and just pull it in just to match there we go so that's that bit done if we look at the top here if we just turn the opacity back up uh, it's pretty good pretty good match little bit out here but I'll be erasing these areas um, and just just basically to cover the the bright spots so 
I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, let's have a look here. You can again, you can see it slightly out here. So I'm going to take that corner and just pull it, pull it over a little bit. It's just, just to about there. It's not going to be perfect. And again, just pull this, this one back a little bit and down. Yeah, that will do. Okay. So once I'm happy with that. Um, I can just add a mask to this uh, uh, transformed uh, image, piece of the image and I'm going to pick up my paintbrush tool and pick black and I'm going to erase um, the sections of the image I, I don't actually want so obviously we've got this sort of pillar here but it's not on this side so basically I want to come in and start erasing oh, let's pick black start erasing um, the bits that uh, don't match up so I can remove this and basically you want to get rid of all the edges just so that it blends in much better so if we look here again we can see the line here Let's get rid of that. And we just run our brush over. You notice I'm using a hardness of zero, uh, just so it's fairly gentle. There we go. I still see a little line there. There we go. That's gone. And do the same here. Just work my way up until the blend can't be noticed. go just working my way around and as you can see the actual positioning once you start blending it in it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect uh, particularly on such a, a busy a busy scene here um, certainly once once you're zoomed out you won't actually see the join um, let's just work our way around. There we go. I think that's looking quite good. So if I turn the layer on and off, you can see a slight distortion, but the main uh, problem has been fixed, which is the lighting uh, hitting these areas here uh, with no information. And that's, that's been transformed there. There we go, that looks uh, quite good. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so that's one thing you could do, and you could repeat that process in this area here as well. But uh, the main thing I want to do is uh, add some dodge and burning, mainly burning in this case, just to, to reduce these hot spots. And I'll do one or two areas um, just so that you get how how to actually do this. Now, I don't actually use the dodge and burn tools themselves. What I do is I either use brightness and contrast there or exposure uh, to reduce the um, lighting. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, let's, I'll go for exposure. And if we look at this area here and I just reduce the exposure to something so that's the original so if we look at the pillar next to it if I try and get the bright one down to that sort of level to the ones next to it which is maybe about I can go further uh, because I'm what I'm going to do now is um, invert that layer so it's basically turned it back off again pick up the paintbrush and now use my white tool, uh, white paintbrush, to paint back in the lower exposure. So if I come down here, you can see it previewing um, over the top. So what I can do is just start brushing in and just reducing that brightness. Now in some cases it looks a bit sooty. 
So what I'm going to do is darken it to begin with, then go back to black, increase the brush, reduce the flow just so that um, uh, it's not as excessive and I'll just quickly brush over and reduce that sooty effect on the on the image there. So if we go back, uh, look at it full screen, and if I turn that on and off, you can see the area where I've reduced the light, and it's not quite so distracting uh, as before. Uh, let's just bring the flow right down, and I'll try turning it on and off again. Okay, and I think just a little bit more around there. And I can repeat the process, say on this area here. So again, I can just gently scro stroke, and just reduce that, gently stroke. And same here. There we go. And I just repeat that uh, through those areas. Um, here in particular, it uh, hasn't lost all the detail, so there's no need to, to copy areas, but I can just, just brush down those and just reduce the harshness. And the same would go for here. You can see it's quite dark, well not dark, but more detailed there than here. And if I just brush over that, nice and gently, so it's not, not too obvious. If I go too far, I can just change back to a black brush and just take a little bit off. Um, and that's basically it. So, two ways of repairing. Um, one is to copy and paste, and the other is to uh, use an exposure layer and uh, reduce the exposure in certain key areas where it's uh, pulling the eye away too much. Uh, final thing, uh, we'll crop. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's not quite symmetrical. So I'll bring in this side here so it's about the same. And I would say it'd be about that point there. Uh, the top's okay. The bottom is a little busy, um, so I could either leave that or I could just pull it up. So I'll remove those distractions at the bottom, maybe, and just uh, take it at that point there. There we go. Um, again, I could decide that um, maybe that having half a uh, statue there is a bit distracting so I'll pick my in-paint tool and just remove him there I'll remove that okay that looks okay uh, and maybe one more go that's okay and just a quick patrol around the edges uh, Probably don't need that or that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm fairly happy with that. And assuming I'd go around and uh, fix the rest of the hot spots in similar manner, um, what I would probably finally do is add a um, curves and just see if I, I can uh, improve it slightly with contrast. So I could bring down the, the darks and probably maintain the... Yeah, I don't want to do too much there. Uh, so you want to keep the detail. If we bring it down too much, it will just get too dark. Just make sure this area here is okay. Yeah, that looks okay. 
And finally, I'd probably just sharpen. Let's just add a high pass sharpen. Um, blend mode, uh, linear light, monochrome, I think, in this case. And I'll increase it. Generally, don't go over a pixel. Uh, let's try about 0.8. And let's just um, let's accept that, and let's just turn it on and off. And it's just giving that nice bit of sharpness. There we go. And you can see that on, off, on, just adding a little bit more sharpness. And that's probably as far as I would go. So what I can do is. Um, did one the, the other day, as they say, and just uh, bring this one uh, through. There we go. And I've done more work to this um, to reduce and balance out the light. It just gives you an idea of what, what you can do. So if we go back to, say, just showing one of the uh, that's the mid uh, mid exposure of the, the bracketed images. Let's go to that. Um, I'm in the develop persona here, but you can see all the um, highlights. Let's just turn those off for the moment. And give you an idea. That's the original, what would be the original photo. And this is the final edit. Okay, thank you very much.